Hi, this is Georgina Villasenor Lee. Welcome to my training for supervisors and managers on the Family and Medical Leave Act. So by the end of this presentation, you should have a basic understanding of the Family Medical Leave Act, also known as the FMLA. But most importantly, you should feel comfortable enough to understand your role as the front line of this organization you are the first person who will know whether we as an organization have been put on notice to provide the employee with their rights to take leave under the FMLA. So you play an important role here. And so the goal of this training is to provide you with those resources so that you understand what that role is. So you're probably wondering, why is this important? Well, Violating the FMLA comes with some really hefty fines. For example, in 2013, a Verizon Wireless employee was essentially laid off and retaliated against for having taken time off under the FMLA for their own serious injury, a shoulder injury to be more specific. So ultimately, the employee's manager had noted the time taken off in her performance evaluation, which affected her rating. Well, according to Verizon Wireless, um, their layoff procedure, they have some sort of uh, formula or process that involves examining the performance ratings of their employees and making a determination as to who's being laid off. Well, they decided to lay off the specific employee who then took them to court and guess how much money she won? $800,000. So that's how costly a violation of the FMLA can be. So it's important that you as the frontline are trained and understand what your role is. FMLA is a detailed topic and you should be sure to familiarize yourself with all the law's requirements. Let's take a look at five fast facts that can help you get started. First, FMLA applies only to certain groups, including private sector employers who employ 50 or more employees for 20 or more weeks in the current or preceding calendar year, all public agencies and all private and public elementary and secondary schools, no matter their size. Fast fact number two, only certain employees are eligible to take FMLA leave. To be eligible for FMLA leave, an employee must work for a covered employer, and must have worked for that employer for at least 12 months. The employee must also have worked for at least 1,250 hours during the 12 months prior to the start of the FMLA leave. Finally, to be eligible for leave, the employee must work at a location where at least 50 employees are employed at that location or within 75 miles of the location. Thirdly, FMLA requires covered employers to provide eligible employees up to a total of 12 weeks of unpaid leave in a 12-month period for certain reasons, including the birth and care of a newborn or newly adopted child, to care for an immediate family member with a serious health condition, or when the employee is unable to work because of a serious health condition. FMLA also provides special family military leave entitlements for eligible employees. A covered employer is required to maintain group health insurance coverage, including family coverage for an employee on FMLA leave on the same terms as if the employee continued to work. Upon return from FMLA leave, an employee generally must be restored to his or her original job or do an equivalent job, which means virtually identical to the original job in terms of pay, benefits, and other employment terms and conditions. Fourth, when requesting leave for the first time for an FMLA qualifying reason, an employee does not need to specifically mention FMLA. The employee should give a verbal notice sufficient to make the employer aware of the need for FMLA qualifying leave, but in all cases, the employer should inquire further of the employee if it is necessary to have more information about whether FMLA leave is being sought by the employee and obtain the necessary details of the leave to be taken. Of course, there are many instances such as the birth of a child or scheduled medical treatment where both the employer and the employee know and plan specifically for FMLA leave. Lastly, employers covered by FMLA are required to post information in the workplace explaining rights and responsibilities under the law and to formally respond to a request for FMLA leave or when the employer obtains knowledge that the leave may be for a FMLA qualifying reason within five days. 
So now that you have a good overview of the FMLA, let's touch a little bit more on the qualifying events, the reasons why employees can take time off under the law. The most common reason that you will see is probably due to the birth of a child. Employees can take um, time off to either birth or to care for a child up until its first year. Another reason associated with um, children is to uh, for the process of adoption or even placement um, into foster care. Again, this is within the one year of placement. Um, you will also see most commonly employees taking time off for their own serious medical condition, whether it's a block of time or intermittently. Um, the law also allows for employees to take time off to care for their spouses, their child, um, or a parent who may have a serious health condition. All of this is verified through a medical certification form that your HR office will handle and processing. Um, lastly, one qualifying event that you don't see as much within our organization is um, qualifying exigency leave, which happens or arises out of um, a, a, a spouse, a son or a daughter or a parent who is actively in the military and who has received orders to be deployed. So activities that involve preparation for that deployment are covered and it's actually extended up to 26 weeks. So that may be another reason an employee can take time off. A couple of do's and don'ts. Do contact your HR representative once you are aware of an employee who may be needing time off. This may come in the form of just letting you know casually that they have a medical appointment or a series of medical upcoming appointments, or maybe they're going through treatment. Also, approve and report any FMLA qualifying absences accordingly to your payroll department. We want to make sure that there is an accurate history. It's the HR department's responsibility in conjunction with payroll to track the FMLA usage accordingly. Also, do make sure to require employees to state whether their absence is due to FMLA, specifically in those intermittent cases. Don't take any adverse action against an employee for taking FMLA time off. For example, documenting that time off in their performance evaluation as with the case with Verizon Wireless. And you also don't want to take any adverse action against an employee, such as um, any other sort of discipline like a written reprimand. Another thing we cannot do is allow the employee to waive their FMLA right if we know that the condition qualifies under the law. Lastly, we definitely do not want to violate any sort of medical privacy um, act or information by attempting to clarify medical documentation or information. If you have any concerns, please let your human resources representative or office know. Now let's apply what you've just learned. Take a look at this example. Here you'll find your human resources contact information. Don't forget to reach out to them when you have any questions or if you need to let them know of an employee who will be taking FMLA time off. Thanks and have a great day.